Story time on how my best friend faked her death. By the way, we're going to call her Amanda, and we were both 16 at the time. Going through high school, Amanda got bullied a lot. She didn't necessarily know how to defend herself, so I would always find myself defending her all the time. And I had no problem doing it because that was my closest friend. We were like sisters, and we grew up together. And people bullied her about her nose being too big and her acne. Just really mean stuff. There was this one time the mean girls at our school literally threw pizza at her face to tell her that that's what her face looks like. And I will always try to help her with her confidence. But I noticed me being around her all the time, I started to get bullied. And people would always attack me about hanging out with her. But don't worry, I'd always handle myself. But it got to a point where it was just overly done. So one day, I just wanted to see a test of what would happen if I didn't talk to her for the day or hang out with her. And the next day, she disappeared. Come back for part two. Part two on how my best friend faked her death. So like I said, I started to get bullied for hanging around her. So I wanted to try and see what would happen if I decided not to really hang out with her for a day. And the next day, she disappeared. So the day she wasn't at school, I went back home and called her. Her mom picked up. And I asked her if she was there. Her mom said, no, I thought that she was with you. So that night, Amanda never came home. So the next day, her mom had told me that she was going to go to the police station and file a missing persons report. But she was told she couldn't really file one because the person had to be missing for at least 72 hours to be considered missing. And I felt so scared because she's never missing. She never ups and leaves. And I started to believe it was because the day I stopped talking to her and I was blaming myself for her being gone. And I was hoping that she wasn't kidnapped. But come back for part three if you want to know what happened. Part three on how my best friend faked her own death. So Amanda was missing for a week. Her mom had came to the school to let them know that if they ever saw her come by to please let her know or to please call the police. And during this whole time, a lot of people were coming up to me, asking me what happened to her. And of course, I had to tell them that I didn't know because I didn't. But all I could hope is that she was safe and alive. There was a few students that laughed about her being missing, but there was a few students that cared. So I was asking people to put up posters. Around this time, social media wasn't really out, so we couldn't necessarily post anything online. Everything went on polls. Amanda was also in the news, and every day I cried hoping that she would come back. After two weeks of her being gone, I get a letter from Amanda. And I'm so shocked because I'm like, oh my gosh, where is she? And it was a suicide letter. Come back. Part four on how my best friend faked their own death. So I got a letter in the mail, and it was from Amanda. I was so shocked about the letter, I opened it up really quickly. When I read it, I found out that it was a suicide letter. And I just sat there and cried. I had went to her house and knocked on the door to let her mom know, but her mom also received the same letter. After a couple days, her mom did have the police do another search and no one could find her. I was hoping maybe she didn't commit suicide in a place that we could never find her. I don't know, but it just didn't feel right and how she just left off this way. Her mom just couldn't believe it. So a couple months I would stay inside her mom's house I sleep over, sleep inside of her room, just grieving her being lost. But I couldn't believe that she committed suicide. I didn't believe that she was dead, and neither did her mom. Deep down, I knew that she was somewhere out there. Come back for part five. Part five on how my best friend faked her death. So after two years of Amanda being missing, even though she wrote those letters to us, we both still didn't believe that she was gone. And I thought about her just about every day. During these years, her mom would constantly do searches. Maybe if she wasn't alive, then maybe they could find her body. Then maybe then she would find the truth. Her mom couldn't accept the fact that maybe she was dead. And every week on Sunday, she go out there even by herself. My mom and a few of her friends would always tell her she can't keep doing that. She'll even sometimes go out in the middle of the night, walk around calling for her. And her mom started to get really sick. After the third year of her being gone, her dad finally came inside the picture. Amanda was never really close with her dad. He wasn't really a part of her life. He started to see how mentally ill her mother was becoming, so he decided to set up a funeral so this all could end. But her mom didn't want to attend. Come back for part six. Part six on how my best friend faked her death. So her dad wanted to set up the funeral so they could finally end this grieving. 
her mom didn't want to attend because she didn't believe that she was dead and still I still couldn't believe it either. Her dad read the note and he wanted them both to stop all this pain. After a couple months battling out of doing a funeral, he finally did one. And I started thinking, maybe she is gone because maybe then I could let go of this whole situation. So of course me and my family attended the funeral. I mean, of course they had no body to bury, but they did set up a grave and they put her stone in the ground. So after 11 years of that happening, I believe that she was dead. I had moved to Texas, met my husband, which I married, and I got pregnant. Maybe four months into my pregnancy, I wanted to take mommy classes. And when I got there, the instructor looked like Amanda's mom. Part 7 on how my best friend faked her death. I got pregnant and I wanted to start taking mommy classes. When I had got to the class, the instructor looked like Amanda's mom. But almost like a younger version. When I looked at her face even closer... She had the same mold that Amanda had down the bottom of her chin. And then I snapped. That's Amanda. When I walked up to her and said, Amanda, she looked at me and froze. After she stared at me for five seconds, a girl comes up to her and says, Mom. I looked over and gasped. After she talked with her daughter, there was more and more women coming in for the class. And once I realized it was her, I ran back to my car. When I got to my car, I started to have a panic attack because that was her. And the daughter that called for her had to be maybe 12 or 13 years old. And I started to think, in order for Amanda to have a 12 year old now, she would have to have gotten pregnant months before she went missing.